There are only two things that I absolutely hate. The favoritism shown by the weaponsmith in my LARPing club, and acoustic electric guitar pickup systems. So really this has been the bane of my existence for a long, long time. I've always preferred the sound of a mic'd up acoustic guitar, but as I've learned in live situations, that really isn't always possible. Sometimes you just gotta roll with it, all right? So a lot of things that people have been telling me, experienced performers have been like, you need to get some kind of DI or preamp for your acoustic guitar when you play live. So the people at Orange Amplification were nice enough to let me borrow their acoustic pre twin channel preamp device, and it really has made a huge difference. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I use it, why you might need it, and some of the cool features about this. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do recording-wise with this, but I'm really gonna be talking more about it just strictly for like a live performance situation uh, where you just have kind of two channels of audio going, in this case, an acoustic guitar and a vocal microphone, okay? So, right off the bat, we're gonna start with channel A. Now, what I don't like about acoustic guitar pickup systems is that they sound super bright, super shrill. So I'm gonna turn this basically to the factory settings where I'm gonna set everything at flat. I'm gonna turn the reverb off. We're gonna get more to the reverb in a second, but this is just gonna be kind of a very flat signal. Now, right off the bat, I can tell it sounds a lot better, a lot warmer than what I'm usually used to. Now, what I do is I usually go into a mixer into a Bose L1 Compact, which sounds great in an empty room, but once you get into some kind of smaller venue or whatever size venue, and there are actual bodies in front of you, it really eats up a lot of the low end of the guitar. And in my experience, it usually sounds a little bit more like this. <laughs> which to me really is kind of like a biting, very thin sound. And the way I got that on this is by just really boosting the treble all the way out. So first of all, let's run through this. Treble, bass, mid, there's a frequency knob, which is a frequency sweep that you can use to adjust what frequency you're using with your mid-range knob when you're boosting and cutting it. Gain and a heat knob, which is uh, uh, the tube in there kind of how much you wanna lay on this kind of like upper harmonic frequency kind of warmness, warmness that it has. Warmness, warmth might be, a, might be a better word for that. But yeah, basically what I like to do, and this might sound a little bit drastic, is take the treble and really lose it all the way down. Now, this is something I've usually done uh, when I play live. I take the treble, really go all the way down. <laughs> that already sounds uh, a lot better than what I've been able to get in the past. You might think that like taking all the treble out of your signal in this kind of way is drastic and it really just kind of bites into the high end. I don't think so. I still think I think a lot of the high end is still there, but it really kind of to me brings out the character of an acoustic guitar that I'm looking for. Again, all of this is just like personal taste. Uh, and also too, my, my style of playing has a lot of attack because I usually use a pick. Now if you're using like a finger style thing, really put that treble up. And that's a little bit different, okay? So it really depends on you as a player and kind of what your preferences are. Now my absolute favorite thing, as I said, take that treble all the way down, really relies on this frequency sweep right here. Now when I say a sweep, if we just kind of boost the mids up, so you can kind of hear it, just hone in on those frequencies. You can kind of hear what it's doing. Now my personal favorite is really kind of taking some of the lower mid range. In fact, like just uh, for like an extreme example, let's go mids all the way up. Now you're boosting 1.8 kilohertz. That might be a sound of too much mid range, too much upper mid range. Go all the way down. I actually like that. I think that's very. Very bassy acoustic guitar sound when you're playing just as an accompanist, right? Now, if you're in a band with maybe a bass player, you might not want something like this, or if there's two acoustic guitars, you might not want that. I still think that's a little too low. So, what I do, I kind of set this here, you know, maybe like two o'clock. 
and then kind of come back down to here. And I think that sounds really good. Also too, the great thing about this is it has built-in reverb. So we're gonna put the reverb right here. It has a great sounding reverb. All right. So this right here is exactly the acoustic guitar setting that I've kind of been searching for. high end that people have kind of come to expect from an acoustic guitar when you're playing lines. But it still has a lot of that low end kind of beefy stuff that like bigger acoustic guitars are, are known for, right? Again, this is Martin GPT PA4. Love hate relationship with this guitar because it plays great. It has the Fishman analog pickup system in it that I've struggled with, but again, this really does kind of bring out the best in it, right? Now, another thing that is really great about this is, like I said, let's do a little bit more with this reverb knob right here. This is kind of a modest amount of reverb, in my opinion. You can get crazy with it, dime it out. So that might be a little bit too much for my taste. I think it really sounds great, you know, kind of noon or below. And probably here is where I usually kind of end up setting it. I also want to talk about channel B, okay? So like I said, this is kind of like a singer-songwriter's dream because it really kind of fleshes out the acoustic guitar signal that you can use with a microphone if you're a singer-songwriter. So the nice thing about this is the first channel that we've been talking about is a quarter inch input. So you just take the quarter inch from your guitar right here and then go right in there, okay? Now you have options with the second channel. You can go XLR in or quarter inch. So you can do another, another acoustic guitar if you want. Anything that has a quarter inch, you do a keyboard or something like that. But I think a lot of people really find helpful using a microphone. You can do a condenser microphone because it does have phantom power. I'm gonna demo it with a uh, dynamic Audix OM5, which is my usual live microphone. And you can have separate XLR outputs. So I'm using the separate XLR outputs to go into my interface. Live, you could actually do a blend of it with a quarter inch output, if you wanna just use both of them and kind of have the controls, the volume controls just on board here on hand, thus replacing a mixer. You really have all the basic essentials you need to replace a mixer, and like I said, with a Bose L1 Compact or another uh, powered PA system, you can just plug it right in and still have control over, over something. And really, I, this takes up less room in my bag than my Yamaha mixer did. And because it has a reverb, it has pretty much everything that you need. It also has dedicated um, effects loops that you can use. So if you're maybe using like a looper pedal for your acoustic guitar, you can plug, uh, plug that in and not affect anything else. And then if you're using like a vocal processor or something for your voice, you can plug that in separately. Uh, on the back here, okay? So again, I think it sounds really good. These would be uh, pretty close to the settings I would use live. Again, it also depends on the venue and the room that you're in. Like I said, uh, when I first started playing out live a lot more, I, I was kind of shocked by how quickly the low end and the low mid range disappeared once you got people in a venue. And that's why I kind of like to, to overshoot and maybe make it kind of like a little boomier or, or warmer, thicker. Uh, with this, then I know I'm gonna kind of need because the sound of a room with people in it is gonna sound a lot different than the sound of you just kind of like kicking it in your room or studio. Or something. So something that might sound good at home might not necessarily sound good on the road, which is why having a kind of versatile, versatile amount of options is super helpful. So this is gonna be dynamic with some reverb uh, and then just kind of like the settings as you see right now. I know that it's wrong to stray From the path I started yesterday But in my heart there's just one way To show the things I'd meant to say She 
reminds me of someone that I used to know. Before my feathers turned to stone, when love was blood and not in bone. That's what she reminds me of So basically, uh, that's it. Just kind of like a rundown of how I feel like I fixed or really enhanced my live acoustic sound. A lot of other things I might be doing with this. I think one video I might do is kind of just take all the acoustic electrics that I own and just kind of shoot out the pickup system with or without a preamp. So uh, let me know if you want to see other videos like this. Definitely check this out. I'll link you to more information on it below. If you have any questions or comments, send me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.